hello guys so welcome to part four of my turn tutorial so we're gonna both go over this new level of detail system that i have and then we're gonna do infinite turn generation so first let's show you how i'm doing this so far so now i could change terrain size set it to 100 and the editor auto updates and you could change the level of detail which is the resolution here Set it to 50, see that change? Or let's set it down a little bit, something more obvious. There you go. And I could turn on normal, I mean, wireframe. You could see that change here. So 20 and 30. To go all the way up to 100. I set it to 100, so that's the limit. So I can't pass that. So if I put 300, it goes back to 100. All right, so let's go over the code for that. Okay, so first you create the terrain size and the resolution, those two variables. Then we have the max height, we have a center offset and noise offset. And these are for the editor to create the uh, collisions. Then we Go here to generate green, same stuff as before. Create a mesh, create a surface tool, and we have the noise. Then we start the surface tool. So as before, we do a for loop, but we use the resolution now instead of the size. Then we get the percentage of the X and Z value. Then point and mesh, we get the percentage, we create a vector tree for that. Get a percentage minus the center offset to make the mesh centered. And then we assign that to the terrain size. And we multiply that. Then for the Y on the vertex, we add the noise. And this noise offset is to smooth out the noise. We're going to get rid of that and we're going to use uh, the actual noise uh, frequency instead. Then we add the max terrain height to that, or multiply. Then UVs as usual, surface tool. Set the UV, set the vertex, then we create the triangles here using the same resolution there, there, and there, and generate the normals, add the mesh to the array mesh, and then add the mesh, the array mesh to the mesh instance. And all these other code down here are for the same for the editor, and yep, that's it for the. LOD system. Alright guys, so now we need to convert this to be a chunk for the terrain, the infinite terrain system. Let's create a new chunk. And other node mesh instance 3D. So we're gonna copy most of the code, so let's just call this chunk. Chunk. Save that in the infinite terrain. So what I have here is let me close this one now. What I have here is a scene for the infinite terrain. So we're gonna have the code there for that. And we have a viewer that I could move around in the scene. So the infinite terrain is gonna need a reference to that to know its position. So let's add a new chunk script. Now most of this code is gonna be the same. So let's, let me close these off here. First, let's set its class name to be a terrain chunk. Now we get the same data again, that the terrain size, resolution, max height. But here we have a chunk LODs. So this is going to be the each details that we're going to use for the resolution. We pass that to the resolution when you're going to update the mesh. Then the position cords and the center offset. I just made it a constant. Then I have a collision. We're going to use that to update the collision if the LOD is at the highest point. So that's so uh, that's the workaround I have to use so it doesn't lag too much. Then in the generate terrain. We now, we're gonna pass a noise to it. So we got rid of the noise that was built in the, art, in the mesh by itself. Then we pass the coordinates, then the size, and then we set it to be initially visible. So we can use this to, whenever we're updating the mesh, LODs, we're gonna set this to be true. And if it's uh, far away or we're just creating a bunch of them, we can set it to be false initially. So we'll just drop that code in here. Okay, so drop the same code from before. 
one important point when you get the noise to the from that noise uh, pass you also add the position to the coordinate that you need from the noise so it will be seamless There's x and z position then you could come here set collision if set collision equal true create collision we create that down here so it creates a collision if it has a child we clear it and then we uh, do a tri mesh collision this is a function that's in the mesh instance itself then we set the chunk to be initially visible which is the code up here and we create that function so chunk is visible we set the visibility to be that visibility over here we say update chunk and we get the position of where the player is and then the max distance from the player then if it's greater than the distance we set it to be true or false and for the LODs say update LODs the position again get the distance and we have a function to update the uh, boolean to update the terrain and then we have a new LOD so we say if viewer distance is greater than a thousand these values I just hard coded them they work so um I don't know if you guys wanted to if you want you could create a boolean that matches up to this and then you set those values there and then you say greater than a thousand set it to be the first one and you get it the second one uh if it's less than a thousand third one if it's less than 900 and the fourth if it's less than it. if it's at the highest detail we set the collision to be true so the next time it updates here it's gonna create a collision and we say if the resolution is not equal to the new resolution that we're setting here we set the resolution to be equal to it and then pass tell the terrain to update so we set this to true then we return it and we return a value so this is gonna be called from the infinite terrain generator and that should be it for this now for the infinite terrain let's create another script infinite terrain new we pass the chunk create a chunk size chunk height view distance and a reference to the player or the marker wherever the viewer is and then we export the mesh scene and view position so that's gonna be this viewer's position terrain chunks this is gonna keep track of all the chunks that are created already and then chunks visible then the last amount of chunks that were visible and we export and reference to the noise we're gonna create the noise in the editor and we can edit it freely so in the ready function we set the chunks visible to be a rounded to integer so the view distance divided by the chunk size for example if i had 400 here it would only be four chunks visible or one i should say in this case and then I have a set wireframe function and then update visible chunks this is a wireframe thing so i could see the chunk level of detail so the debug to be true and then the viewport draw mode the wireframe and for update visible chunks let's put it past here chunk, update visible chunk we check if there's any chunks in the last visible chunks and it, and set them to be false and then we clear that story so now we get uh current x and current y that's gonna be the viewers um position in grid coordinates so you have one negative one negative two or you know one two three on x and x and y but it's gonna be in 3d space so the y is actually for z now we create a loop so we get an offset between the visible chunk that we created here the amount of chunks visible in each direction the y offset and x offset so we create a chunk coordinate that's the current x minus the offset current y minus current offset so we use that as a key if the terrain chunks has this coordinate we update the chunk with the function we pass the viewer position and then we pass the distance the view distance that's this value up here for title plus we check if the coordinate that update lod's it returns true remember back in here where is it chunks this update lod's it returns the update terrain boolean so it's false by default and if there is a change in the LODs we set it to true so we pass that and we tell the terrain if it's true we tell the terrain to regenerate and now we set that 
uh, is visible to be true. So we pass that noise again and the trunk coordinate and the trunk says. So if the trunk is visible, the trunk visible, we add it to the last visible trunks and that's the coordinate. Now we say else if the terrain trunks dictionary doesn't have this coordinate, we create and it's of the class terrain chunk and a mesh scene and instantiate it. Then we add a, we set the terrain max height to be the terrain height. Then we get the position of the trunk coordinate and trunk size. Then we set the world position to be the x and the x and the z. So we have it as y in the 2D here. Then we set the global trunk position to that world position. Then we tell the trunk to generate using the noise, the trunk cords, trunk size, and we set it to be invisible initially. Then we say terrain at that point, terrain chunks. Then we add that reference and that should work. So now we could save. Let's go here for the tree view. Let's assign the viewer. That's this guy here. And we check the chunk machine. Quick load. And say chunk. Then we create a fast noise. And we can now adjust these values here. Let's use a uh, perlin. And let's make the frequency a little low or about there and that should work so let's save here could now run this scene it doesn't crash I didn't call update visible chunks just put that in the process here copy that didn't set the player position either let's set that here now we set the visible update visible chunks there about that let's run now there you go let's add our uh Hello D system to be we actually didn't add the um geometry material override the cloud very material. Let's move the camera back a bit. So let's grab this camera, put it at about one thousand on the Y. You'll be able to see it better now. There you go. And that's it for this tutorial. Could move this close. Let's move the camera down so we could put it in a more realistic position. For zooming on it, let's turn it this way. We could actually get a good look on the terrain. And let's set the terrain height to be a little bit higher. Maybe 40. And we could run this again. There you go. You can't tell that it's even. Um, let's turn off the uh, wireframe. Let's comment this out. There you go. Alright guys. That's the end of this tutorial. So I'll have this code available on um GitHub. I'll post it in the description. Alright. Take care guys. The next video I'll probably do threads. Alright guys. Have a good one.